don't. But no. I know who's helping. I know at least three or four of us that are helping, so we should be good. Um, Robert. Sir. Food pantry yesterday. 78. 78 boxes, okay. Um, 13 new, so about 20% more. Oh wow. Um, and <coughs> right around 260 people. Yeah. And there were 33 people at the clothing bank, so usually close to half of what the, the number of boxes so it was another good day of helping the community definitely one thing to please keep in mind September 29th Rich is on vacation we will be having service across the street at the Lutheran Church at 915 initially it was going to be here but with Rich's vacation we've changed it to having Full service over a combined service across the street, so please keep that in mind. October 26th is Worldwide Communion. That will be here at 1030. Uh, the Lutherans are doing their yard sale next month on the 13th. They're going to be selling chicken corn soup. There's an order form up front here if you'd like to sign up to order any soup. And and vegetable soup. Sorry, they're doing vegetable soup also. Um, the orders are due the 13th. Pickup is the 19th. So if you'd like to order any, please check the sheet up front here. Doreen was nice enough to give us blank sheets. The ELC is doing a sandwich sale. The orders are due the 23rd. So we've got a little over a week. To get those back in, delivery date is October 3rd, which is Thursday again, or I don't even know. But anyway, orders are due the 23rd, so please, if you'd like any sandwiches or subs, please get your orders in. <coughs> um, also, this month's uh, consistory meeting will be an email. We got a little confused as to the date and how many people were going to be here, so we're just going to do an email this month and go from there. Any other announcements I missed? All right, and I will turn it over to Bob.
morning. Good morning. Welcome to all who worship with us on this the, and I just looked at it, 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, I would uh, um, add to the announcement about the uh, yard sale on the 19th that if you have stuff that you would like to donate, drop off is, uh, there are four dates, October 9th, which is a Wednesday from 10 to 1. Thursday, October 10th, from 2 to 5. Saturday, October 12th, from 2 to 5. And Monday, October 14th, from 10 to 1. Um, if you need me to write those down or make a copy of this after, uh, you can see me after the service. Is there anyone for whom we wish to pray for? <coughs> yes. Taylor, Zach, and Bailey Whalen. He arrived yesterday. Anyone else? Kayla and Dan Loser. They got married last weekend. We have come in grief and with hope. 
we come together in your name to honor your presence and to give you praise. Amen. Amen. Do not be afraid. Draw near to the Lord. Touch the hem of God's robe and be healed. Holy, holy, holy Lord of hosts, the earth is full of your glory. Have mercy on us, for we are lost, not fit to stand in your presence. We are people of unclean lips, failing to teach the truth, making promises in vain, spreading falsehood and fear. Forgive us, God of grace, transform our lives with your mercy. Open our lips to sing your praise. Send us out in your service, that we may proclaim your glory to all the people of the earth. Through Jesus Christ we pray. The Lord reaches out with compassion. Our guilt has departed, and our sin is blotted out. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
perfect greater haven to see the whole body for all of us make right. many mistakes. If we put bits to know the state forces to make them perfect us, able to keep we got the whole body whole body body body. right. Or look and ship if we put bits in though they are so forces that make them strong is to guide them. We guide yet they are guided by a very or look and ships wherever though they are so large that it takes strong winds to guide them. So also the time yet they are guided small by a very small <coughs> yet it boasts of great wherever the will of <coughs> how great a forest is so also is by a small fire and the time yet it is a fire the tongue is placed among our powerless forest as a world blades by a small fire. Stays, and the tongue is a fire. <coughs> so the tongue is fire to cite our nature and as a world self is set on fire. It stays the whole body. It sets on fire to cite our nature and is set on fire by hell. Can be tamed. For every and has she tamed by the universe of reptile and sea creature. But no one can be tamed the tongue. Second, 
this is the opening second this is the opening passage in Mark's gospel on the in the way in which Jesus in the way in which Jesus is the way of the Christian the way of the Christian because Jesus is way of because Jesus is way of followers the way of his place of this text the place of this text in the Christian life is it is it is the heart of man. Verse 27 sets the verse 27 sets the scene. Jesus left with that Jesus left and traveled with Athenia and Caesarea of the whole age of Caesarea. It was a city of rich. It was a city of rich religious. It had once been the city. It had once been the Baal worship center of Baal worship. With at least 14 temples, with at least 14 temples in and around. The city was proclaimed far the city was and wide, the city far and wide as the city of and sin. gods of one's choice. And of the gods of one's choice. So as Jesus was walking down, so as Jesus was walking down, the sun rose between the Jesus buildings. asked the supreme question. Jesus asked the supreme question of the question that determines the question that determines the eternal persons of the eternal thing. Who do people who say that I am? Do people say that I am? Our confession of Jesus often our confession of Jesus often short changes. Some of us only see Jesus. Some of us only see a great Jesus as a great a man who was highly esteemed. A man who was highly esteemed. He was considered one of the greatest. He was men. considered one of the greatest men. But notice a crucial point. But notice a crucial point. These professions, these professions were not only untrue. Were not only untrue. But they were dangerous. But they were dangerous. They contained only half. They truth. contained only half. And people truth. were deceived and misled. And people by were them. deceived and misled by them. Some said Jesus was. John Some said Baptist. Jesus was John the Baptist. They professed Jesus to be they a great spirit, spirit, a spirit, a spirit, a spirit, a spirit that was a spirit that was being martyred to be martyred for the faith. Herod and others. Herod and others spot this upon hearing upon Jesus hearing the miraculous his power his power his words his words Herod fancy Herod fancy that either John had been revived or else his spirit indwelt in Jesus some said Jesus was Elijah they professed Jesus to be the greatest prophet and teacher of all times Elijah was so considered Elijah was predicted to be the forerunner of the Messiah even today, the Jews expect that Elijah will come back before the Messiah. And some said Jesus was one of the prophets. They professed Jesus to be a great prophet sent for their day and time. He was thought to be one of the greatest prophets brought back to life or one in whom the spirit of a great prophet dwelt. These same false Confessions exist in every time and every generation. He was only a great man of righteousness who was martyred for his great faith. And as such, he leaves us a great example of how to live and to stand up for what we believe. He was one of the greatest teachers and prophets of all times. He was only a great man who revealed some very important things about God and religion. As such, he can make a significant contribution to every person who is seeking God. He was only a great man, a prophet sent to the people, mainly to the Jews of his day, from which we can learn by studying his life. But the confession of the disciples was that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. The Greek word to ask means to ask or to question. It is in the imperfect tense, which means that Jesus kept asking his disciples the question, Who do you say that I am? That question was extremely critical. The answer required concentrated thought and correct belief and genuine confession. The question is asked in the emphatic, but who do you say that I am? The answer to the question is critical. It is all important because the answer determines a person's destiny, their eternal destiny. The answer given was immediate.
and terse. You are the Christ, that is, the promised Messiah, the Son of the living God. The confession is momentous, arising from a personal confession. It is both the confession that saves the soul and sets the foundation for the church. The very life and survival of our soul and of the church as a whole rests upon this simple yet profound confession. The disciples had just made the, profession, the confession that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the living God. And now at this point, Jesus launches a new stage. He begins to indoctrinate them into the way of God's Messiah. For God's Messiah is not our Messiah in the way in which we conceive him. The phrase he began to teach them is significant. From the time of the profound confession that Jesus is the Messiah, beyond a question that Jesus is the Messiah, something significant happened. A new stage was being launched. He revealed with a powerful thrust that the Son of the living God was going to be killed and raised again from the dead. Never before had this happened. Never before will it happen again. History would be made. Jesus had been telling his disciples about his death and resurrection for some time, but they had not understood. Now, Jesus no longer spoke in symbols or in pictures, but he told them in simple, direct words. God's son was going to die and be raised again for the sins of the world. God's plan for saving the world was to take place through a suffering Messiah. God is love. Humans are, by nature, corrupt. So God in love must provide salvation for us. But God is also just. So he must provide salvation in such a way that justice will be done. The penalty must be paid. Death must be carried out. In verses 32 and 33, Jesus started to teach his disciples about the fact and meaning of his death. He talked about it so much that it shook the disciples that Peter had to confront Jesus. We often reject God's Messiah. We rebel against the idea of the cross. We want another way other than the cross. This is what Peter was doing. He was rebelling against the idea that God's Son was to die, that his, that his blood was to be shed for the sins of the world. Peter could accept Jesus as the Son of the living God, but not as the suffering Savior. Such an idea was repulsive and unacceptable to him, and it is to us as well. Some feel that triumph, victory, power, and reigning supreme are God's ways. This was the idea of most Jews of Jesus' day. It was Peter's concept of the Messiah. We often set our minds on material things, not on things of God. The words you do not have in mind mean to think or to mind. Peter did not have his mind his thinking in line with God's mind and thoughts. His tastes were different from God's tastes. Peter's thoughts and tastes were worldly and self-pleasing, not spiritual and not in line with God's thoughts. Often the issue of God and the issues that we want differ dramatically. Our story from Mark's Gospel this morning shows us how different they are. Our ways differ from God because the way of discipleship is tough. Discipleship is the way of the cross. We constantly must battle against the indulging self versus the denying self. Jesus was very pointed. There is a life of self-indulgence and there is a life of self-denial. A person must, must choose between loving comfort and ease or com 
commitment and discipline, loving wealth and property or work and compassion, loving recognition and fame or humility and sacrifice, loving position and power or service and ministry, loving pleasure and feeling or righteousness and self-control. But the question is, how does a person go about making a right choice? Jesus said three things. You must be willing to seek after Jesus. You must make a deliberate, willing choice, a determined resolve to follow Jesus. The choice is voluntary. It is not forced upon you. It is the individual who wills and chooses to be a disciple of Jesus. You must deny yourself. You must be willing to disown, disregard, and forsake your own self and your own interests. The call to be a disciple of Jesus is not to say no to some behavior or thing. A person is to deny self and say yes totally to Jesus. And then you must be willing to take up your cross and follow him. To be a follower or a companion, to be a disciple has the idea of seeking to be in union with and in likeness of Jesus. It is following Christ, seeking to be just like him. Again, this is not a passive behavior but an active commitment and walk. It is energy and effort, action and work. It is going after Jesus with zeal and energy, struggling and seeking to follow in his footsteps no matter the cost. And following in Jesus' footsteps lead to death before they lead to glory. And finally, in verses 35 through 38, Jesus talks to us about life, about saving life and losing life. There is the issue of value, that is, gaining the world or saving one's soul. It seems to be a contradiction that in order to save one's life, they must lose it. But if you abandon this life, if you sacrifice and give all that you have and are for Jesus, you will save your life. But if you keep your life, and you keep it, that is what you have, and you seek more in this life, you will lose your life completely and for eternity. If you seek to avoid aging, decay, and death, and deny Jesus, you will lose this life for eternity. If you seek to make this life more comfortable by choosing money and property instead of helping to meet the needs of the world, you will lose your life. If you seek thrills, excitement, and stimulation of the world and ignore Jesus, you will lose your life. The world makes it difficult to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That is because you must become countercultural. You must become different than everyone else. Most of us are unwilling to give all that we are and that we have to Jesus. We always want to reserve a little bit for ourselves. But this hurried and sinful world demands that we take up our cross, deny ourselves, and follow Jesus. For the sake of the world, the church, and for all who are hurting. Amen. Hymn number 287.
Christ Jesus, who is the embodiment of God's love and the embodiment of humanity, the lover and healer of our souls, who saves us by washing away our transgressions, who teaches us life's deepest things, how to pray, how to love, how to be gentle with each other. We trust in the Holy Spirit, God's power for loving in us, that comforts the faithful, empowers us to love as Christ has loved us, and joins us together as the body of Christ. In loving service to the world, we trust in the power of forgiveness, the reality of resurrection, the infinite, eternal life God gives us through love to which love we pledge ourselves as followers of Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. offering serve as a powerful witness to the world in need. Guide us as we administer the gifts that you have given us for the building of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the church throughout the world. Form us into communities of forgiveness and grace. Help us to notice where you are calling us into new relationships and give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray <laughs> for the earth and all its inhabitants. Protect lands at risk of wildfire and heal dying forests. <coughs> Where fire brings destruction, raise up new growth. Guide us in tending precarious ecosystems. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern nations, tribes, and cities. Open them to the cries of people in need. Direct them in shaping policies. And prioritize the health and well-being of all who struggle with hunger and housing insecurity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, and all who grieve, especially those that we name aloud or in our hearts. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your enduring love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equity and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages in their or else his spirit, O oh God, indwelled in Jesus. We remember that Jesus was Elijah. Who would the they profess Jesus, Jesus to be the greatest prophet and teacher of all times. Accompany us, Elijah, Elijah was so considered that we too, Elijah was placed out of the foremost in the sight for children of all ages. Hear us, our God. Hear us, O God. Hear us, o God. We entrust these and all we remember our children and dead, God, who with the great cloud of witnesses bear with Jesus Christ, the our Savior, who taught us to pray. Accompany us, and our Father, and to faith, who are in heaven. That we too hallowed be thy place, our hope, thy trust to come. Thy will be to hear us, O God, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. We entrust these and all our desires to you, Holy God, for the name of your beloved child. And lead us not, Jesus Christ, our Savior, but deliver us from evil. Our mind is the kingdom who are in power.
share with them that you love them.